welcome to episode four of The Knitted Bean. I am your host Echo and I'm coming to you from somewhere in Montana and I am here to talk to you about knitting and nerdy fandom things. If that's your jam, stick around. If it is not, feel free to find a different podcast. There are plenty that I love, which we'll be talking about later. And I have learned that the first take is always the best take, so we're going to keep it this time because I always lose my enthusiasm after that, so we're going to stick with this one. Even though the dogs are being a little bit noisy in the background, we do have a bit of a change of scenery. I am recording a little bit later today than I normally would because, really girls, because I had to run some errand this morning, go to the doctor, um, and then I felt like I needed to rewash my hair and redo my hair because I had the biggest, like, what do you call that, um, health health rub thing that you get, cowlick, the biggest cowlick ever, and it just, I couldn't even paste it down with hairspray, um, and I'm not one to use hairspray to start with, I, in case you haven't noticed, I go all natural, I wash and wear, I wash, I blow dry, I go out the door, I don't very often wear makeup, unless I'm really in the mood, and when I'm really in the mood, then I love it, but 90% of the time I'm not, and I am not a big hair products person, thank you very much. I have bar shampoo that has conditioner in it, and I go. I don't, I'm not somebody who spends an hour in front of the mirror. More power to those of you who do, um, because you're very talented, but I'm not. And I like to leave the house 15 minutes after I roll out of bed, so. Anyway. As I was going to say, welcome and thank you to all my returning viewers. I see that I have 10 subscribers, which is exciting, and I know that doesn't sound like much to many people, but it's double digits for me, and I find that very lovely that there are 10 people out there who share the same interests as me and find me entertaining enough to continue to watch me. So, um, if you are a new viewer, welcome. This is a podcast, again, about knitting and nerdy fandom things. If you don't know what nerdy fandom things are, you're welcome to stick around to the end and find out. If you're brave, if you're not, meh, just stick for the knitting. Um, this is a swearing-friendly podcast, so if you have small ears, you may want to send them out of the room. Other than that, not too much to go over. So what is with the weather in the United States lately? We have, I, I know people online from Texas, who lost their power for days and days and days, and then they lost their water because they had lost their power, and so their water plant, I guess, like ran out of generator, or, or I don't know. And then other podcasters whose houses have gotten flooded, and you know, up here in Montana, we are used to that kind of weather. We're prepared for it, like our houses are prepared for it. And so it's not a big deal. Like our pipes don't freeze when that happens because our insulation is rated for that. But you know, the South is not. That's not okay down there, you guys. And then even up here, I feel you know, like I said, we're prepared for that weather, but we have had wind, like 60 mile an hour wind that was blowing cars over on the interstate and the freeway. And um, there's my, sidetrack here. My ever conundrum of interstate versus freeway. I grew up on the west coast. It's a freeway, but out here they call it an interstate and every once in a while I flip flop. They're the same thing, you guys. Anyway, um, and then two, three days ago we made national news because we had a 30 car pile up on a bridge um, on the freeway because we had like a snow squall and I just like, I had taken a video of it and sent it to a friend and been like, look, we're having some snow again all of a sudden because it had been nice. And I thought nothing of it. And then, um, somebody said, oh, did you see the news? And I looked in the news and I guess so we have a bridge that goes over a river and it, I mean, it's high up and, um, the snow squall made it so that nobody could see and I guess some cars wrecked and then all the other cars ran into them, which there's really not very many cars out here. This is Montana. It's not very populated. So all the other cars ran into them because it was slick and it couldn't stop and it was on a bridge. So it's, I mean, it's an enclosed space. People actually jumped off the bridge to like escape the cars and they landed in the cold icy water and were injured that way. And I was just like, wow, that's something that I've never heard of happening out here. Like we don't have pileups on freeways out here like 
we did when I lived in big cities like Seattle and stuff. So it's crazy. Um, so yeah, I just, the weather is insane. And now it's like 55, 60 degrees out there, which I don't know what that is in Celsius. Um, like 19, 18. I probably totally wrong on that. I don't know how my Celsius memorized that well. It was insane. So could we just have some normal weather? And I feel like it's almost spring here. Like I'm hearing birds. What's up with that? I saw geese. It's March. We don't have spring in March in Montana. We have spring in like May, middle of May, after Mother's Day. Don't plant your stuff before Mother's Day. It'll freeze. It might even freeze after Mother's Day. Um, so yeah. But anyway, so yeah, I appreciate everybody liking, subscribing, commenting. Um, I love all the interaction. It helps the algorithm. And two, it just makes me feel like I'm not talking into the ether. Although I don't mind that either. Um, so yeah, I continue to do that. And it just, it really makes me happy. It, this gives me something to do. I don't have a lot to do anymore besides knit and sit, which is fun, clearly. But, you know, after a while, it gets boring. Um, so I am not drinking tea today, you guys. I'm drinking coffee. It is in a mug, not meant to offend any parents, but totally fits me. It says condoms prevent minivans. Um, I don't have kids. I've never wanted kids. I've said I haven't wanted kids since I was like 11. And, um, lots of people have told me I would change my mind and I never did. And my husband doesn't want kids. He's the teacher. He has like, he teaches K through 12. So he has like a hundred kids. Thanks. He's good. And we have dogs. Those are our kids as good as they can be. And I'm good. I have nieces. I have nephews. I'm around children. And I, I love that my friends and my siblings have kids and that I get to interact with those kids. So I just have never wanted any of my own. And so this mug is very <laughs> representative of me. My husband finds it hilarious. And I'm drinking Seattle's Best Coffee because I love Seattle's Best Coffee. I liked them better before they were bought out by Starbucks because Starbucks has kind of a, and a lot of people say this, like a burnt taste to me. Um, I'll drink it because sometimes that's like the only thing available. But when I lived in Seattle, when Seattle's Best was independent, they had the best coffee. Not so much anymore. Um, I apologize if you can hear my dog chewing on her hoof. In the background, she has like a cow hoof, which I don't know if that's like offensive to anybody, but it was humanely sourced and it's organic and it's better for her than rawhide and it keeps her teeth clean, so deal with it. Um, so speaking of other podcasters, I wanted to talk a little bit about what I've been watching um, because I do watch just an absolute ton of podcasts and Netflix when I knit and... Um, some of them, like, I just, I really love. And then sometimes I just really connect. So I do watch Arnie and Carlos. And they don't really knit on their podcast. But they just talk and, like, they let you into their lives a little bit. And um, I love them because they're so human. And, you know, um, I think it was Carlos had gotten sick at the beginning of the pandemic and he still struggled with it and he was talking about that and how he struggled with it and um I was just I just wanted to like send him a message and be like oh my god dude I get you it's totally normal to not have any kind of memory <laughs> like that because although I never um was sick from the pandemic I do have a lot of health problems not too different from that and I get it and <laughs> it took me so long to get used to that and um, to come to terms with that and so I just I was just like oh buddy and then um, he was saying that he would never be a muscle man he would never have a muscle body when he was working out to get his lungs back in shape and um, his uh, other half said you don't have to have muscles to have a good body and I was like I wish more people would say that I wish more people would admit that that like lots of different body types are good bodies you can be heavy and still be pretty you can be heavy and still be good looking you can be thin but not muscular and still be good looking you know people call people a bean pole and 
they say it derogatorily and you know you can be thin like that and still be good looking and um you can be short and be good looking you can be tall and be good looking you know you, the definition of good looking is beauty is in the eye of the beholder or in in the eye of how the person feels and so i thought that was really cute that um that they said that that and he meant it. He wasn't just saying it to be funny. So I thought that was cute. Um, so I've been watching them since since they've been back. And um, I like just their sit and knit with you episodes. But also like they had one with where uh, they were making pancakes and knitting and how many stitches to make a pancake. So that was cute. Um, and then Chevy Rell. I love Chevy Rell's stuff because she is very, again, authentic. And you get to see you know, well, she edits, she edits a lot, but she shows the edits of like blah, 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 and reverses it. And I love the way that she edits like that. So that you see what she messed up and she doesn't care if she mispronounces something four times. And we have the clicky clack of every dog claw in here now. Um, so I love that. And I also love that she's just like an, an unabashed knit what she wants to knit, craft what she wants to craft, doesn't really care about you know, everything that everybody else is all up in arms about. And then, um, I have watched for a while, my other friend, um, who knits in Beijing got me hooked on the Stranded podcast with Amy. And that is actually one of the reasons that I decided to go ahead and podcast. That was one of the podcasters that I saw and I would occasionally, she would be talking and she'd be like, you know, I didn't get anything done today because I decided to just have a mental health day and um, read fanfic instead. And I was like, ah, there are people out there who read fanfic and knit. I'm not the only one. So I love that. And, you know, just a, I'll, I always loved that she was really inclusive. You know, she makes book recs and the book recs that she makes have queer figures and people of color and just it's so and it's she's not like she's not coming out and being like I like this book because it has a queer person in it like that's just who she is I like this book it happens to have a person in it who happens to be queer you know and that's cool um and then a couple ones that I've been watching recently that I hadn't known exist, Adornits. Um, so when I bought the Witcher Progress Keeper, I discovered that Adornits actually, the, the shop that makes it, she has a podcast and I really like it because again, just the authenticity of she's just, you know, a lady with her kids and her kids all like interrupt her podcast and she doesn't like, try to make it look perfect and edited and you know um it's just like look I'm I have a parent I have kids they run around I have a cat it's in a sweater you know and that's cool I love that I love that like we show our real selves and not just picture perfect million dollar edit you know Instagram filters and you know they're fun but they also kind of hide who you really are and, and what you really see of people. And then um, the Caffeinated Crafts Mamas podcast. So I happen to notice this person on um, Instagram, speaking of Instagram, and saw that they had a podcast that had just a few episodes. And I was like, oh, cool, somebody else who's new and just started out. And so I went over and I started watching them. They're nice short episodes um, that she's recording while her kid is asleep on his nap. And so you can always tell she's always like, Okay, so I have like 30 minutes to get this done. <laughs> um, but you know, she's been knitting and sewing for a really long time and so she's really good at it and um, really into, you can tell that she's nerdy, <laughs> which I like. Again, authenticity. You can tell that like she has a bit of a life outside of knitting and what she does and, and I love that. Um, and so I thought that I would mention her as well because she only has a few episodes. So if you want to be one of those people who starts right at the beginning, hers is a great one to go check out. Um, and then, I, you know, there's always some of the like ones that like everybody watches, like Needles at the Ready. Um, I do also really like the Bearded Pearl. Those two are really fun as well. Um, 
but the, I mean, to catch up on them, you've got to go back a little ways. So, okay, so let's get into the knitting because I don't know how long I've been recording for, but it looks like something about 15 minutes, and that's a really long intro, and you guys are probably bored by now. So, FOs, I'm wearing one that you've never seen before um, because I knitted in a week. So, second episode, we spoke with Aiden from Undercover Otter, and I had asked them what one of their favorite, um, like, collaborations was, one of the favorite, like, designers or, you know, whatever that they had worked with was, and they men mentioned Yarnison, or Jane Murison, and the Rainbow Relay Shawl, and it got me thinking because I had bought some minis to match. I'm sorry. Apparently, someone's angry over a toy. I don't know. I can't even tell. She's old. She has a little bit of dementia, and sometimes she just gets bitchy for no reason. <laughs> so, anyway, back to the shop. It got me thinking because I had bought some slubby yarn that I loved, and from Pancake and Lulu Yarn, Ply Yarn. And I bought some mini singles to go with it because I thought I'm going to make a shawl out of that. I really love that slub yarn. And I don't know what shawl I'm going to make. I'm just going to stuff that in my stash for later. I'll figure it out. One moment. Izzy, what are you doing? What are you barking at? Okay, I helped her out. She stole the toy. We're good. Um, so I decided that I was going to make a... Pardon the noise of my chair there. A rainbow relay shawl. Which was glorious. And it's a fast knit. It's a crescent shaped shawl. And has some short row shaping for the little, um, I don't know what you would call those at the bottom, but the rainbow relays. And it was supposed to have a pico bind off, and I was going to do that, or bobbles. Then I decided with the slub that might be too much. So instead, I used a pom-pom maker that was a gift. And I made pom-poms, and one of my stores, it was not even a knitting store, it was just like a, I don't know, just a cool store that we had here. They had two locations, and one closed out. And they went down to one location because of the pandemic. And so... They had these little, like, I guess they're bracelet charms on sale. And so I got a couple Z's and, like, a octopus and a couple other things for really super cheap. So I picked that up and added that to my, um, sorry, my dogs are distracting me greatly. Added that to my tassel. The back side's just as cute as the front. It just has pearls instead. You could wear it like a bazillion ways. You could wear it like a scarf if you wanted to, and it works just fine that way. Um, but honestly, the way that I had it, I really like it that way, and it fits that way so good. It's thin, but it's really pretty warm. It would be a great, like, fall, spring, it's 50 degrees outside, and I went to the doctor in my tank top and this, and I was totally warm enough. Um, so this is definitely like my favorite way to wear it. Um, and like I said, I knit it in a week. I was a little bit obsessed. I got the pattern, I got the needles, I cast it on, and then uh, that was all I did for a week. I didn't work on any socks. Which is shocking because we all know that I work on a lot of socks. Izzy, come here. My little granny. I'm going to pause for a minute and help the granny. And we're back. We have two cow hubs now, so hopefully there will be no more dog fighting. Um, but yeah, so I just knit on this thing for like a week straight. I was obsessive about it. It was a ton of fun to knit. I do have... A few reservations not at all about the pattern the pattern was lovely it's more of a formula so you can there are, there are just straight out written out patterns for like four different versions of the shawl um, and or she gives you the math and you can choose to like 
weigh your yarn and do the math yourself of like I have this many grams each section that looks like this takes this much yarn and do whatever you want and just go what she calls freestyle on it which is what I did I put a stripe in um, in the middle which you can hardly even see because the yarn matches so well it's in a singles in the middle of the slug and you just can't even tell and then I did a full relay with like some crazy repeat and then below that I did a series of stripes and then I bound off in the slub. But slub, slub yarn. What do you guys think about knitting in slub? Because I love the way it looks and I love the way it feels. It feels like moss, I've decided. That's my conclusion. It's like walking on a mossy rock, not like slimy moss on a riverbed, but like if you grew up on the West Coast, you know what I'm talking about. That um, moss in like the, rainforests <laughs> over there that you just like walk through and everything there is covered in moss. You could sit on a rock, you could walk on the twigs, they're all covered in moss. And um, it feels like that and I love it and I love the way that it looks but knitting it is a bitch. This is the splittiest yarn I have ever knit with and it, it's not because like it's not Pancake and Lulu's yarn. I think it's all slub yarn of that type. It is, it's a nylon core basically with the um, wool wrapped around it and then where you get the slub is like a, a poofier, more, less twisted section of wool with a little nylon core running above it. Right, so it's like a fishing line with a little cocoon of wool below it and you catch that fishing line but you leave the cocoon or you catch that cocoon but you leave the fishing line I mean it's such a pain in the ass like it's um, I knitted so much slower on that and then I would hit the singles and I would just fly through the single section you know and then I'd get back in the slab and I'm like oh my god this is... and I was using a, a lace needle a metal lace needle so I had a decently pointy tip it might have worked a little bit better if I had like a high high a sharp but um yeah, A, I would not recommend knitting slub on like a blunt tipped wood needle. You'll hate yourself. And B, it's like, it's a trade off of like, is the extra effort worth the super cool looking fill? I think it is. And I think I will knit with slub again. I've already like gone and looked to see who carries it. It's not as common of a base because I think it's a bitch to knit. But I think I definitely would. Um, in fact, I am not gonna lie. I think I wouldn't mind like a, a spring top out of this that would look real like in touch with my inner 90s girl. Um, but what are your thoughts? I mean, have you ever knit with it? Do you plan on knitting with it? Have you knit with it and you hate it? You knit with it and you liked it? Or you knit with it and you're like me, wow, this is a bitch, but I'll do it again anyway. Because some of us just are masochists and like to torture ourselves. So <clears throat> that's my slubby slubby goodness here. I have one other FO, which are my two, I'm calling them my two can socks and you'll see why. Um, but they are, the pattern is the Samphire socks by Helen Stewart. They were in the Hand Knit Sock Society too. And this is the first time I've ever done fraternal socks. So, uh, last time you saw them, I was knitting cuff down, even though I don't like cuff down. I was knitting cuff down, and I was right here on this one. Let me get you a nice close look here. As I get hollered out for not using my cane. I've got Kill Bill Toucan in Ace Fiber Work. It's their tight twisted. I think it's just tight twisted sock. I don't think there's anything else in there. And then um, strain sock for the heels and toes. They're minis from Undercover Otter. <clears throat> so even though it's two ply, it's super, super plump. It's definitely um, well made and I really like it. And I have about half a skein left and I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with it yet. I 
I don't know, I haven't decided, but I, I'm like not ready to be done working with it, that's for sure. Orange is the Annoying Orange, and the turquoise is Octoman. I've put these on, they fit so good. They're so nice and squishy. This um, broken rib in the back is like, I just wanna make a pair of boot socks out of it. So I'm in love with these, they're great. Another set for my box, these are mine, I'm not giving them away. I have a tendency to make socks and give them away. Um, so I made those on a size one, which is a little odd for me. But just like last time I used a size one, the, the yarn was really plump. That two ply was really plump and it was lace and I wanted the lace to kind of open up. So I did go ahead and use a one. Um, the pattern is like $7.50, but it comes in the Handmade Sock Society too, which you can buy. That has all six patterns for $22. So, I mean, for three patterns, you get six patterns. Might as well just buy the whole thing. Um, I'm a fan of her patterns. And then, like, to give you an indication of how plump this is, you get 105 grams. These dogs are not going to give it up. You get 105 grams, but it's only 390 yards. I think it's, it's a yarn baby. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. That's, I think it that I have to say on that one. Oh, I did put a fish lips, fish lips kiss heel in um, because I don't do heel flop and gusset. I like fish lips. I like, um, Pretty much any kind of short row heel they fit me good and they're easy and that's what i do i don't care what you put in your pattern i'm doing my thing i did follow her toe though which honestly actually i think it's just the same toe i normally do um the rainbow relay i didn't mention it was like a five dollar pattern um other than that let's move on to whips okay so whips that we've seen before the escal shawl I put like one row on it. I'm not going to show you until I get some more, mostly because I need a whole other shawl in the same amount of time. And then the Dreaming of Happiness socks, those were the ones with the little muted hearts on them. It has the Pico bind off that needs the two needles. And remember I said I could not find my other um, size zero Chowgu nine inch. I still can't. And it was such a pain to bind it off with a one and a zero that I literally just ordered, I ordered a Haya Haya Sharps nine inch zero because I want to try the higher higher sharps anyway because I'm still like trying to decide what kind of um interchangeable set I would like so I ordered that it's coming today and when it gets here I'll do that bind off and continue on that sock but I was like I'm not doing that again it was too big of a pain in the butt I'll wait for the needle to get here in the meantime what else have I actually worked on besides the shawl and the socks so I really want to make a sweater and I'm very intimidated by garments. I don't know why. We've been over this every episode. So I made a baby sweater. It's still missing the arms because I could have sworn that I had size nine DPNs, but I guess I only have size seven, up to size seven. So I need to run out and get some size seven D or size nine DPNs. Oh my God. Girls, be quiet. You're ruining the podcast. They're like, you didn't let us up on the chair this time. You're in the kitchen. Why are you in the kitchen? I'm in the kitchen because the light is better, ladies. Oh. Pause that thought. Okay, the Miss Grants have been separated. Again, apparently Granny is just real cranky about sharing today. Um, anyway, so this is the Biddy Cash. And... It's by Laura Spargo Anderson. It was a $3 pattern, which I thought was totally reasonable. I made it in a $3 roll of sweet roll worsted wheat acrylic because it's gonna be worn by a baby. It's gonna get barfed on. It's gonna go in the wash. Our acrylic has its place in our lives. I'm a little concerned that it's beige down here because babies barf again. Um, I don't have babies, but I do know that they barf. I also know that they poop a lot, and that white is in a very perilous place. So, <laughs> the sweet roll, it like faded into whatever colors, and I, did, I didn't want it to be quite like that. 
So I took it down and I ran out of pink right under the armpits. So I started the next color. That was fine. And then I was looking at it and it would have been like long stripe, long stripe, and then an edge of white. And I didn't want that. So I just measured out like an inch, made a one inch stripe. And then I matched the size of the white to the size of the pink and made up my mind that all the edging was going to be in the pink. So I'll do the same thing on the arms when I get the needles. Um, it's, I mean, it's really soft. It's really nice. It's a great baby yarn. It's $3. I bought it at Walmart. I don't have any babies, as previously discussed. I am, like, pushing 40. All my friends' kids are somewhere between, like, fourth grade and going to college. All my nieces and nephews are somewhere between first grade, no, like, third grade, second grade, and going to college. So, I know someone who knows someone who just had a baby. And they are going to get this to give to that person as a gift because I just needed the practice. I needed to get over the fact that sweaters were intimidating. And you know what? My friends were all right. Sweaters are easy, you guys. Top down raglan sweaters are easy. You literally need to know how to knit, purl, uh, knit two together, cast on in a variety of ways. I mean, I used a German twisted cast on for the collar and what they called a backward loop cast on for underneath the arm, which to me was just the basic cast on that I learned when I first learned how to knit. And then I did a stretchy bind off on the bottom and yeah, that's it. Like I did not need any other skills. I put the, the stitches that it told me to put on waist yarn. For Christmas, my mother-in-law got me a bag off of Amazon of like 50 stitch holders in every size imaginable. So from the size of the arm of a baby to like this big. And I just grabbed two of those and used those. Um, they're not hard at all. So I don't know what I was so psyched out about. My husband literally sat in the chair and laughed at me. He goes, I don't know what made you think you couldn't knit a sweater if you knit crazy ass socks like that. Well, well I just was intimidated, okay? So I'm not intimidated anymore. Uh, I have now made a Trello page of all the sweaters that I want to knit. How many yards of yarn they take to cover my fat ass? And like, if I have kind of an idea of which yarn I'd like to use for them, which yarn I'd like to use for them, and if they are like a one color yarn, a fade, a color work, and then the, the yarn weight, so like fingering or DK, I don't really have, I don't think I have any worsted on there. The only worsted sweater that I really want to knit is The Weekender by Andrea Mowry. Um, and picture. Like, I, you can, I don't know if you're familiar with Trello, but you, it's like a listing thing. You can pop a picture in there. And I know that, like, I could do all of that on Ravelry, but I use my Ravelry differently. Like, I use it to like everything that I kind of like. And then my cue is things that, like, I absolutely am going to work on. Like, what's the next five things I'm doing? And this is more like a wish list with an attached to buy at some point list. And it kind of helps me like organize my brain for like, oh, hey, I have, you know, $60 or $100 for yarn, which doesn't happen very often right now. But if, if it did happen, I will be able to look at that list and see like, where do I really want to spend that money for yarn so that I have enough to make a sweater or whatever? Because otherwise I'm just like, ah, oh, let's buy three skeins of sock yarn because I like socks. And it's $30 a skein and while well, we all saw what happened with the $200 of Christmas money or I guess it was like $100 of Christmas money but I just bought sock yarn with it right and I didn't really think very far ahead so this is a way for me to do that and then you know like I am like a three a two two three x somewhere in there it kind of depends on the pattern I can really a two x with big boobs so sometimes it's a three x and so um it takes a lot of yarn to make a sweater and I like nice yarn. That said, I'm not opposed to like cheap but good yarn. So like I know that a lot of people have used Holst Super Soft and uh, you can buy that in cones, one pound cones. 
and a one pound cone is like $30 and has like 2,200 yards of fingering weight on it. I'm like, that's a sweater for me. That's a $30 sweater. I am totally down with that. You know, great. And if it's something like um, that I want to do a, sorry for the clicky toenails. She needs a trim. Um, if it's something that I want to do, like a hand dyer or something, that's a lot harder, right? Like that's $30 a skein and that's like five skeins, six, I mean, that's like a hundred and... $50, $160 sweater. That's a lot. So that's not happening unless it's like on clearance or discount or the best way for me to do that honestly is if it's a fade. So I do have a couple skeins already planned for a fade. I want to fade a pavement. And so I've picked up a couple green skeins from hand dyers and that fade is going to be one skein from like every dyer that I like in green that fades from dark to light. And that way I can pick it up $30 at a time because I don't have a $200 sweater budget and a lot of people don't have a $200 sweater budget. It's going to take me a whole year to come up with the yarn for that and I'm okay with that. I will love that sweater. Um, so one thing that I used to do was I used to knit dog sweaters just like free form before I even knew knew what I was doing I mean I literally knew knit pearl yarn over and knit two together and that was it I didn't know how to make a stretchy bind off or a stretchy cast on or anything and I used to knit sweaters for my dog and actually it came out really good all things considered but now that I've made this I saw another sweater on there that was in the baby sweater section that was put on a Boston Terrier okay clicky toes get out out they're like no we don't want to be near you. Why are you recording in the kitchen? Hang on. Good. I opened the door and sent them outside. It's like 56 degrees out there, so this to them is like, ha ha, we haven't been able to go out of here. <laughs> so hopefully we don't get like any cars driving by and the noise from that, because right now they're super happy. <laughs> anyway, it, was, it wasn't the booty cash, but it was something, it was another baby sweater put on a Boston Terror, and I was like, I put, um toddler clothes like toddler shirts on granny all the time because she gets so cold and a $6.99 shirt from Target is so much cheaper than the dog clothes at Petmart and they last so much better like I can throw those in the washer and the dryer and the, you know and the ones at PetSmart or you know wherever fall apart in like three washings so I was like, I'm going to knit her a sweater now. She'll probably get a sweater before me because hers will be out of $3 acrylic because it needs to be washable. <laughs> like, I'm going to do it, though. Um, all right. That's it for, I mean, I have the socks that I'm working on, but I'm not working on them until my needle comes in a couple hours. So, uh, acquisitions. The Dossamon shaft that I ordered on December 1st finally showed up. It was 11 weeks later after with like, I swear, like 10 or seven or eight or those had like no movement. We really thought it was lost and we had both filed a lost um, mail claim, but they were both like, well, we don't know. We can't even figure out if it's lost, both DHL and U USPS. But it did finally just show up. It just showed up and said, hey, this just showed up at customs. And then it came through to here pretty quick from there. And it was beat up, but it didn't matter because it was yarn. And so I actually filmed a, a little like unboxing of that and I will try to insert that here. And there goes the first car and the dogs are back inside. I'll try to insert that here because it had the like most fun packaging ever and I really want to order another one now. And, and I was really excited about the yarn that I got in there. I ordered something for my friend in Beijing so I can send it to her in Beijing because 
Plus, Mon Chef doesn't ship to Beijing, and I have some other stuff to send to her anyway. And then I just got like a surprise pack of three to four hundred grams of yarn. So I had a three full skeins and a mini, and they were all different bases and all different colors, and they looked like they were all one off colors, and they were so cool. So you will get to see past me show those off now. Hello, this is Past Echo, and I have finally received my box from Das Mannschaft in Germany after 11 weeks. Um, it has a something for a friend in China that I'm going to mail off, and then it has a mystery bag for me. I do apologize for the lighting. I'm trying to make it behave, but I have a lot of light coming from my kitchen bay windows, so it's a little bit tricky. Anyway, I wanted to open it up on camera this time because I waited so long for this to come. So let's see what I got. And hopefully the camera, like, hello camera, realizes the right colors because we're only gonna get one chance at this. So the box is a little beaten up. I will admit it's got some damage here, but honestly, not nearly as bad as the last box I got from Germany. Uh, that came from my writing partner and it was smashed. So this one was a little sturdier, which is sad because it doesn't matter on this one. It's just yarn, yarn can get smushed. So the first thing we have is something that I did know that I was getting, a tiny little Dasmannschaft bag. And for those of you that don't speak German, uh, Dasmannschaft means the moon sheep, and it is from a poem in German that I will try and link. So then we have, um, Release the Kraken. This is a mini that I ordered specifically to do some socks toes with, and it is nice and squishy. It kind of feels almost non super wash, so I'm interested. It didn't say it wasn't. It's very squishy. This is what I have ordered for my friend in China. This was Earl Grey, and it's on their sparkly base. It's Earl Grey hot on their sparkly base, um, which is called Andromeda. And it is pretty cool. Come on camera, you can do it. Maybe if it can refocus on how I am. There we go. Yeah. So that's Earl Grey Hot. And this is camera. This is Release the Kraken. Still doesn't. It's like bad lighting. <laughs> there we go. Release the Kraken. Surprise, surprise. So this is supposed to be, apologize for the crinkles, very nifty little bag though. Three to four hundred grams of unknown yarn and you were able to say if there was a thing that you didn't like. So I said I don't like hot pink. Ooh. So you would get a variety of bases and maybe even some one of a kinds. Ooh, this looks like lace weight. Oh, it is. So this is an alpaca silk cashmere lace weight, you guys. I'm so thrilled, look at that. It's orange and brown tonal, I love it. Oh my God, and it's very, very soft. Dough. Yeah, that did a little bit, okay. Next up we've got, Aurora, which looks like a single ply, 100% merino. 
It's brown with some purple. Whoop, whoop. My light went away. Damn natural lighting. It's such a pain in the ass. There we go. Some purple and a little bit of pink, but it's not, I don't, this is fine. It's like when the whole thing is solid hot pink. That's what I'm like, oh, I can, that would have to be a gift. Then we have, and this is exciting because I don't have very much of this in my stash. Draco, which is, um, looks like a DK, maybe even a worsted. It's a lovely teal with just rust orange and black dark teal spots all over it and I like a speckle so I can oh I can make a hat it's very soft what is the colorway name on that does it have one it doesn't so that must have been a one of a kind um some of them are just one of a kind, one off, um, like test skeins or something that they dyed up for a yarn club and didn't use it all. And then, because I love yellow, this is a Pegasus Mini, um, which means it's basically a sock blend, and it is the banana phone, which you know, everybody in the 80s either had a banana phone or one of those clear ones where you could see all the circuit boards. That was, that was mine. I had to share it with my sister and we had to leave the door open if we were calling somebody because heaven forbid we do something naughty. And you know, every teenager did something naughty anyway, so it didn't really do our parents any good. It did it. These will definitely be toes on my socks. So I'm curious now if any of these other ones had... I think these might all have been a one-off. I don't see a colorway name. Nope, on any of them. <laughs> I'm so excited. All right, everybody, that's all I have. So I will send you back to Future Echo and we'll see what she's gotten up to. She hopefully has a shawl to show you. Have a good one. The other thing that came, which was not quite as delayed because I ordered this right around about Christmas, so it was only like six weeks, was uh, another order from Undercover Otter with some of my Christmas yarn that I ordered for socks because we know I love socks. So I got some Squirm Siren, which I had been eyeballing forever and ever, and I think it's out of stock right now. Um, so I'm really glad that I ordered it. It is yellow and blue, basically, with some greens in there. And it's on strain sock, which is just a super squishy uh, nylon merino blend. Yeah, 80-20. And then, because they had just posted um, an update when I went to order that, and I like marled yarn. They had fingering weight, gnarly marley. So this is the same like style base as I knit my husband's spring and fall hat out of, except for it's fingering weight. And it's like yellow, super hot pink and black. And this is super wash. The other one was not super wash, which I wasn't sure if it was super wash or not when I ordered it. I really didn't read that far. I was just like, damn it. Um, I have no idea what I'm going to do with this. This is just going to go in my stash. It could be socks. Um, it doesn't have any nylon though. And I, I think I would rather do something like a hat or mittens with it. Or maybe a cow. I don't know. I'm undecided. This will be socks though. Because we know I like socks. So that was that. Um, so on to fandom. And fandom wrecks. So there's lots of fun stuff going on in the Witcher fandom right now. Um, we've got the Fistech and Succubi 
like exchange for the character Eskel that's going on. I'm not participating in it because I was like, I don't really have enough spoons to do that, <laughs> but I'm excited about it. And I know a lot of people who are participating in it and I can't wait for like the stuff that's happening in it to get posted and just like, it will bring a lot of love to the fandom, I think. Um, and then you, you know, we still have the Witcher Wheel of the Year that's still going on, uh, the Witcher Craft Swap, which I am participating in, and I will probably participate in the Witcher Wheel of the Year too. Um, so those things are fun. I'm just kind of waiting in the wings on them. But the fandoms that I want to talk about today are Supernatural, which has got to be one of the biggest fandoms out there. I'm not a huge, like, like I've never watched all of Supernatural, and the Supernatural people are going to gasp when I say that, but I've watched it here and there. I mean, I like it. It's a good show, but I've never, like, obsessively watched it. I don't watch it once a year. Like, I know there are people who literally watch the whole show once a year in, like, marathon sessions. <laughs> I'm not that obsessive. Um, and then Shadowrun. So Shadowrun is a, a fandom based on a tabletop role-playing game and some video games. And it's set in, like, a cyberpunk before cyberpunk was a word like you know it used to just be a word not a video game <laughs> um it's set in like a cyberpunk futuristic kind of earth in like 60 years from now that um has magic back and it has like orcs and trolls and fairy like eh, not really fairy more like fey um monsters and like magical creatures and then um elves and vampires and gals and all this stuff and so but it's real techy and it's set on earth so there's still things like D, &D still exists in Shadowrun and the the person who I am going to recommend is somebody that I would call a crossover queen so the author is Hermit Nine on an archive of her own. I know her as Hermit and this gal can write the best crossovers and I know a lot of people aren't into crossover fix but Hermit she says there's a sweet spot where you can make them slide into each other. <laughs> I don't know. She's just good at it. She can take the craziest thing. She has another one that's like um, Bucky from MCU and Emily from Criminal Minds and it works. It's like her canoe, her little paddle boat of a ship. She's the only one who's ever written it and it has people reading it. Let me tell you. I'm just like, it's good. It's, it's great. It's set in like Venice. It's so good. Anyway. Uh, so she has a little series that is a crossover of Supernatural and Shadowrun. And it is, you can read through it and be almost to the end of the first story in the series and only then begin to realize that, hey, wait, this isn't straight Supernatural. Or this isn't straight, you know, like, I remember reading along and being like, wait a minute, there's no com links in Supernatural. Those are from Shadowrun. Like, why does he have a com link? And then, like, going back and looking at it and being like, oh, wait, this is a crossover. Like, she's that good at it, you guys. Seriously. So, I am going to recommend a story called Come On and Try My New Parts. This is part two in that series. You can read it entirely as a standalone. And, and do. Just just do. And then if you like it, I guess go back and try the first part. I don't know. If you're real up for like committing yourself, read the first part, then read the second part and go for the whole thing. I think there's four or six parts, but it's good. It's worth it. So um, it is rated E and it is what I would call unhealthy guilt smut and it's the best. Um, if you're just looking for somebody trying to like delve through their emotions in the most un 
healthy way possible while it's still being hot, Hermit's got your number. Um, it's totally fandom blind. You don't really have to know anything about either fandom and it will still make most sense and be hot. But I mean, if you know a little about at least Supernatural, it's helpful. Um, and like I said, it can be read as a one shot. You don't have to read the other one first. It, it would be, again, it would be helpful, but it's definitely not necessary at all. She has other ones that are good. Like I said, she has the Emily Bucky and trust me, I hit the time limit on my recording. She also has, um, the first one, the one that I was originally going to recommend, I was going to recommend it just on like literary merit of, you don't have to write a long story for it to be a good story. It's about 500 words, um, and it's rated M and it's still very good. It can be read fandom blind, yada yada. And um, that's called Not the Roadhouse, and it is a Hellblazer Supernatural crossover. Same thing, she's really good at crossovers. And I like it. But in thinking about recommending it, I was like, you know, it's just really not my favorite story of hers. It's a good story, but my favorite story is really Come On and Try My New Parts. And so that's the one that I wanted to recommend. So now you get both. Um, and I guess a side order of Bucky and Emily too, because <laughs> I could not mention it. So that's, that's who I would recommend. I'll put the links below. Um, come on and try my new parts. Hermit Nine on an archive of our own. Make sure that you, you know, are like keeping your eye out for the Witcher Wheel of the Year. Um, the Witcher Craft Swap, the sign-ups closed, but you'll still see it around on Instagram and stuff. And I think it's just cool to see those things. Um, and, oh, I ordered, I could not resist myself. I ordered a Firefly box, you guys, of self-striping yarn from Geektastic Fibers. That's gonna ship in a couple of days. So I will, I'll be a good girl. I won't open it the second that it gets here like I'm very prone to doing. Or if I do, I will record myself doing it so that I can insert that in the next podcast. Because Firefly is one of my like OG fandoms and I was very, very excited to um, order that. I could not resist. It was not really in my budget, but I made it fit anyway. And um, yeah, she's cool. I've been talking to her on Discord and she's just got so many geeky, nerdy, anime, fanficy um, yarns. So if you are like looking for your Yuri on Ice self-striping yarn, yeah, go check out Geektastic Fibers. I'll add that to the links that I'm gonna put in the bottom. Anyway, I hope you all have a lovely, wonderful day. I am gonna give a listen back to this and hope that my dogs were not too noisy. And if they are, I guess I'll be re-recording and letting them out the front door because that made them like dead silent for a while and it's not usually nice enough in the middle of February slash March to let them out the front door. So I hope you all have a great day, night, evening, morning, wherever it is, whatever time it is, wherever you are. And um, you know, if you enjoy watching me ramble on while holding my coffee cup to stay warm, please. <laughs> subscribe, hit the thumbs up or the thumbs down, drop me a comment, let me know what you think about this slum yarn. Um, and I'm still on the fence on interchangeable needles between like licky, licky, wooden needles, because I do, I do like a good wooden needle sometimes, and um, chow goose. So if you have a preference, really, I mean, lots of people use the chow goose. So really, if you have experience with the licky, let me know. And then I will see you in about two weeks. Bye-bye. Izzy, quit. Logs, leave her alone. Too much. We'll have to wait for them to be done playing in the background.